In okay. 2015, uh, Kenny Barron won the MAC Lifetime Achievement Award. In 2009, you have received the Living Legacy Award from the Mid Atlantic Arts Foundation and inducted into the American Jazz Hall of Fame. In May 2010, Kenny Barron was awarded an honorary doctorate of music from Berkeley College. Kenny Barron is six-time recipient of the best uh, of the best pianist uh, by the Jazz Journalist Association. The uh, Los Angeles Times named you one of the top jazz pianist in the world. Um, just weekly called you the most lyrical piano player of all time. Uh, first of all, happy birthday. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a lot of awards and descriptions. How would you call yourself uh, music as a musician? Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm just a piano player. <laughs> you know, I would... Uh, attempt to describe myself in those terms, you know, the best or, or anything like that, you know, so. Is there something that you still didn't nail in your playing? Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff I haven't nailed. <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff, you know. Uh, but it's not about being the best. It's just, for me, it's really just about being as good as I can be and not better than anybody else, not, or not better than this person or that person. I just want to be as, as good as I can be. That's, that's the most I can hope for. What are you working on uh, musically right now? What skill are you developing right now? Right now, it's been a little difficult because of uh, the virus, you know, COVID and being, being isolated. Uh, so it's a little hard to draw inspiration from that, you know. So it's, it's been a little quiet for me, but uh, things are opening up. So uh, you can look for something new. But mostly, I just want to stay active in my mind so that I can play better. Right. And some people took it as an opportunity to practice a lot. Who is your icon? Who is your jazz icon? Uh, well, most of the people I love uh, have, have gone on. But uh, my, my, my favorite person uh, was Tommy Flanagan. Tom. You know, but he passed away. But uh, he was the person, when I was younger, I should say. When I was younger, he was the person I listened to most. Tommy Flanagan, Hank John. Uh, but there's a whole crew of younger people that I, I happen to love very much, uh, like um, Gerald Clayton, uh, Sullivan Fortner. You know, I, I listen to them a lot. And I, I love their ideas. I love their technique. Gerald studied with me uh, for a year at the Manhattan School of Music. So we got to play together every day. Not, I mean, every week, you know, because uh, uh, I had two pianos in my studio. So I got to hear his development, you know, and he's, uh, he's an amazing young player. I love him. I love him. And a nice, and a nice guy, really nice young man, as, as is Sullivan, you know. Aaron Parks is another person who uh, I, I really like a lot, who also studied with me uh, at, um, at uh, Manhattan School of Music. So there are lots of, lots of people, you know, lots of, the, you know, older people who, who, who were my big influences, and then the younger people who, uh, you know, I'm listening to and, and, and absorbing and stealing as much as I possibly can from. I'm sure it's going to be inspiring for them to hear this, uh, that, that Maestro is listening to them. Um, let's go a little bit outside of jazz. Who do you listen to uh, outside of jazz? Uh, well, I listen to classical music. Uh, I listen to uh, especially French composers, impressionist composers, but I listen to, uh, I listen to blues. I listen to uh, pop music. You know, I listen to everything, just about. When you, you know. say pop music, can you name the artist? Oh, well, for instance, well, uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, uh, Anita Baker, people like that, uh, you know. What is uh, Kenya Barn Eating Club? What is this? Eating Club? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did you hear about that? <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't the Kenny Barron Eating Club. What it was was... Uh, a group of friends, you know, my wife and uh, uh, about me, about uh, eight other people, right. and we 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 just had dinner one day, one evening, and it was so much fun, and we decided to continue. And the idea was that uh, once a month we would we would get together on a Tuesday because that's usually not a busy day, and someone would pick a restaurant that nobody has ever been to before, you know, and then. Uh, 
uh, we would go there and eat. And the idea is uh, one of the things we never we never wanted to do was haggle about the check. So <laughs> whenever the check came, it was just split evenly. Period. No matter what you had, if you had a glass of water, That's you beautiful. know, or if you had a thousand dollars worth of stuff, check was split split evenly, and uh, that lasted for quite a while. You know, and we went to some really great restaurants. How does the good food, uh, since you are talking about it, um, how does the good food affect your plan? Uh, <laughs> well, too much of and it. May, and maybe good wine. Uh, yeah, that definitely affects you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 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 what just puts you in a better, better frame of mind when, you, when you've eaten well, you know, and you've had, uh, uh, well, not too much wine, because that can affect you the other way. You know, but 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 good food, uh, you know, just puts you in the right frame of mind. Uh, can it play a bad game for you if, if you have a bad wine before the gig or, or bad, bad dinner before the gig? No, I don't think so. I mean, the, the idea musically, uh, uh, you reach a certain level and you kind of stay there, hopefully, but it, it won't be affected by food unless it's food poisoning. You know, <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully I know not. A lot, a lot of people just do not eat before the gigs. There's some people don't eat, especially yeah. hornets. Right. They they usually don't like to eat because it affects the way they um you know they have to blow. Right. So it, uh, you know if you do that on, on a full stomach, I think it it affects how you feel. You know. My parents were born in Soviet Union, and um, I'm very well familiar with the term hardworking person. Now in jazz, um, many artists would say like, this is a hardworking guy. I'm hardworking for this and, and this one is, what does it mean? Uh, hardworking, it means exactly that. You know, you, you work hard and, and, and you, you take care of business. You know, you have responsibilities. You it's know, good that you said taking care of business because there is working hard as a musician, but there is working hard to get yourself on the road, right? It's all of that. All of that's involved, you know. But it's about handling your responsibilities, you know. Uh, traveling is some of the hardest stuff you can do. I mean, aside from playing, just 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 traveling. You know, I, I remember one time going from point A to B and having to take five flights. You know, that means going through security five times, right. you know, so traveling is hard, but it's just hard working just means doing what you're supposed to do, you know, right. and being consistent. What do you think as a society or even the government, we should do more at taking care of this art form and jazz masters? Uh, well, I definitely think the government should do more, you know, but if, if you look at governments in uh, most many parts of the world. Uh, they're, they're supported, the arts, the arts in general, uh, are supported by the government, you know. And uh, we, we do have the National Endowment for the Arts. And it, it, uh, although it was cut um, by our previous president, uh, but it's still in existence. And I think they did wonderful things, you know, and not just for jazz, but for all the arts, you know. And there are other, <clears throat> excuse me, other uh, uh, artistic groups, not necessarily governmental groups, but they help support the arts, grants and things like that, you know, but not uh, na uh, national government, but also like uh, state governments, city governments help support the arts. So I think it's important. Um, on June 17, you are going to play with Buster Williams and uh, Lenny White on the Brooklyn mm -hmm. Open Up series. What do these names mean for you, both musically and personally? Uh, well, first of all, they're two of my favorite musicians. And uh, uh, Buster, I've been knowing since we were teenagers. So that's a, long, a very long time. <laughs> we're both in our 70s now. So as a matter of fact, I think Buster may be a year older than me, older than I. So, so we've known each other for a long time. And uh, I've enjoyed playing with him throughout the years on you know, numerous occasions, numerous occasions. So it should be fun. It should definitely, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I have a short bleed. Um, I have a few names of famous tunes, and I would like you to share your feelings associated with these names. Uh -huh. Without deception. Ah. <laughs> Actually, that's uh, um, 
uh, an original. The title came from uh, um, a picture of a friend of mine, uh, a young lady I know in Italy. She just posted it, not, not to me, but she just posted this picture. And I saw it on Facebook. And it said, this is me without makeup, without deception. Uh -huh. So that, that, that was impressed by that. So that, that chose that as the title. Fungi Mama. Oh, Fungi Mama. That's, yeah, that's a Caribbean classic. I think, the, I think the original title, I'm not sure of this. No, no, the, I'm thinking about St. Thomas. The original title of St. Thomas is Fire Down There. But that's Fungi Mama is, is just a, a beautiful Caribbean, uh, joyful, joy, joyful, you can dance. It's one of those kind of pieces. I love it. I think uh, Blue Mitchell wrote that, I think. Uh, Blue Mitchell, yeah. Passion Flower. Oh, Billy Strayhorn, one of the most beautiful pieces ever written. And uh, uh, he had a thing, I don't know what it is, being lyrical. Uh, he was able to do that. Um, he and uh, Duke Ellington, you know, they were so closely related musically. So sometimes I couldn't tell who wrote, without knowing who wrote what. They both had that gift. And the last one, uh, New York Attitude. Ah, uh, New York Attitude. Okay. Well, that's, I would divide it to Brooklyn Attitude. <laughs> cool, <sorry. laughs> but I just, wanted, I just wanted to capture a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of the, the the busyness that happens in New York City on the streets and and, uh, and sometimes the attitudes aren't always best. But it's a uh, uh, just a New York on a busy day. You know, that's what that was, what it's about. New York and the busy, especially Midtown. A lot of traffic, people moving about, being busy. Thank you so much. It was fun talking to you. Have a great gig. And I know you have first gig tonight after yeah. a while. All right. See you soon. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Thank you.